Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Today's video will be another in our series of Global War 1936 to 1945 Nations for version 3. So today uh, we're going to talk about Italy uh, specifically. And this video shouldn't be as long as the other ones that I've made so far because uh, they're, they have one less page on their national reference sheets. Uh, there isn't as much involved in them um, because they are a smaller nation. Um, they're still uh, considered a major power in this game, but they are a smaller nation. So let's just take a quick look at that reference card here. Let's uh, check it out here. So you see there um, your income your, and production. It's tens all the way around, right? So it doesn't matter if you're starting in 36 or 39. Uh, your starting IPP is 10 and then your maximum income is 10 as well. That's a change from version 2. In version 2 you're uh, starting with at 7 and so that's a, a really really big difference. Uh, like that was one of the considerations why you might go to war because you, you just 7 IPP wasn't really enough to do anything right. But 10 IPP big difference. I mean you could buy yourself a transport and a militia uh, you could buy yourself a, 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 a fighter. Uh, you can really, really build up uh, when, when your income is 10 like that. And also, um, you're helping Germany out in Spain, um, trying to get the nationalists to win because you will get a point uh, in a, if uh, the nationalists win the Spanish Civil War. So you can afford to send a unit over there and keep something back for yourself, uh, build up for yourself. Uh, anyway, let's just uh, let's just start from the beginning here. But before I do, let's move up a little bit closer here to uh, to the home country. Okay, so the home country is four territories there. So there's Northern Italy, there's the capital of Rome, there's Campania, and there's Mesogioma. Uh, I probably butchered that name, but it's just those four territories. That's your home country. Um, when you start the game in 1936, uh, Italy is at war with Abyssinia and that's um, I, n I didn't used to put much importance into it but uh, after I made a video about that you might want to uh, watch that video or at least go to 13.2 in the rule book and read that because that's something that France might actually challenge you over uh, Abyssinia is uh, controlled by France and they can lend lease to them right so um, like here this is Abyssinia down here uh, right here in this territory and they start with a couple of militia but if France uh, lend lease is something to them then it's going to be a bit more difficult to take because all you have to assault that with is just the units that are right here okay because these units here can't reach um, the planes and stuff they can't reach down here on the first turn so you know that's something that uh, you need to consider so you are at war with Abyssinia you don't have to declare war against them because you were at war with them before World War II began. And also uh, another thing that you can do, there's this territory over here called Albania. You can annex Albania simply by making a combat move into there with some type of ground unit. And then you just put your roundel on there. It's not worth anything. Uh, th there's no point value associated with that territory. And, um, um, but there also there there's no uh, harm uh, harm involved in doing that because uh, the allies quite often get something when you do something right that they get points and stuff but in this case they're not going to for for Albania there there nothing happens to do with that uh, so that's the 1936 scenario you're, you're at war with Abyssinia in the 1939 scenario you're at peace with everyone so. Um, uh, that and it'll remain that way. Uh, you, you will be at peace with everyone until you decide to declare war. Nobody's going to be able to declare war on you until you decide to do something. But we'll get to that in the declarations of war. Um, as far as lend lease goes, uh, you can lend lease to any nations at war with a major power, and uh, again, you can lend lease to the Spanish nationalists in the Civil War. Um, beginning right on the first turn. 
So Italy surrenders when Rome is enemy owned at the end of the Italian turn. And that's really important. See, there's Rome right there. Rome doesn't have a factory on it. Um, it's, uh, it's really quite exposed. Uh, when, when, when you, um, before you decide to declare war on anyone, even a minor power, uh, or even convoy somebody for that matter, you better make sure that you put a bunch of stuff on Rome because the Italian Navy, like, uh, it's actually a pretty, a pretty good Navy and you're going to get some more ships that are on the, the bill queue right now. Um, you have to defend two, two sea zones in order to defend Rome. And so you're splitting that Navy in half, right? And so uh, a sizable British Navy can certainly take one half of your Navy out. And then, you know, if you've only got two units on Rome, they only need, you know, one or two transports. That's it, right? And, and Rome is done. And then, um, but again, uh, like everybody else, and, and I've talked about this through this nation series, uh, if Rome is taken out, then you wait until the, the next Italy turn, and then Italy has a chance by, to take it back. If they can't take it back by the end of their turn, then that means they surrender. You remove all of their units from the board. But you're going to need to take some time to build Rome up first. Um, if you want, put a factory on there. But you can also put uh, militia on there. And you've got a major factory right next door here in northern Italy. You could build your units up here and send them down here. You know, you're going to want to build up the the your home country a bit because you don't start with very many units. And uh, like I said, uh, just a couple of transports and you could be out of the game. Uh, so that's something you really, really need to watch out for. Don't declare war until you've protected Rome first. Um, anyway, so uh, that's uh, surrender conditions. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about declarations of war. So like Germany and Japan, the declarations of war for Italy are really quite easy to understand. You can declare war on anybody but your partners, right? Uh, you can't declare war on Germany uh, or Japan or Vichy France, uh, that, that's another one. But you can declare war on anybody else at any time. Um, there's no threshold you must meet for to, before you declare war or anything. At any time you can declare war on anybody, but like I said a minute ago, be careful when you do that because you're not a very powerful country. So um, make sure there's no transports around. Just you know, you make sure Rome is protected before you do any declaring of war. Uh, now there's no peacetime bonuses. So when you're at peace, you're you're going to get that 10 IPP. That's all you're going to get unless you get some lend lease um, from maybe Germany or something. But I mean. Uh, you don't really need it because uh, the uh, 10 IPP is probably enough for the kind of things that you're going to do unless uh, unless the Axis have got some kind of strategy where you know you're the linchpin of that you, you want to take over all of Africa or something like that right you know then then maybe Germany might lend lease you some but it, it's not really necessary you do have that major factory in there so uh, that's um, a role that you get every turn for the uh, technology uh, that's something that you can look forward to um, and like you, that one thing you you get to start rolling on the very first turn if you start in 36 you're not allowed to, to uh, complete a technology until 1939 but uh, if you decide that there's a technology that you want I mean you've got several roles uh, for Italy that you could probably get one and maybe uh, part of another one right around the time that you you are going to war anyway, right? Uh, there's a lot of them that'll help you, like long-range aircraft. Uh, if you had long-range aircraft and, and you've got a couple of air bases here, right? Uh, then you can reach around, all around the Mediterranean and, and back again, probably, right? So that's, you know, that's a, that's a cool one. Um, but uh, there's a lot of them that'll help you. Um, anything to do with boats or ground units, because you're doing both of those. Um, probably not the advanced ASW, you know, because you've only got one convoy line and the most you can lose is one IPP from it. So, I mean, that's not something that you need to worry about too much. Um, lots, of, lots of stuff will help you out though. Um, so anyway, there's that. 
So no peacetime bonuses, but there are three wartime bonuses that you can get. So once you've uh, gone to war with a major power, uh, you can start collecting these if you meet the, the conditions. So one is that uh, Italy uh, possesses Gibraltar. Here, let's just turn this a bit. So if Italy can take out Gibraltar, um, that's plus two IPP. So that takes your income up to 12. And then the other one is the Suez Canal over here. That's plus two IPP. And then the third one is Mediterranean security here. So if you can get rid of all of the enemy warships from the Mediterranean, then that's two plus two IPP. So if you're having a good game and you go on and take these two out, um, the, like the Gibraltar and Suez, and um, and manage to take out the boats from the Mediterranean, then you control the Mediterranean because you also control access to the Mediterranean. I tell you, that's a that's about the most that you could hope for in this game is for you to control the Mediterranean and North Africa up here. Um, that you would be having an awesome game if you could do that. Uh, and there's you know there's neutrals around here. There's uh, there, there's uh, actually. I, I just noticed something. There's uh, there should be a bonus for I think it's a rack as well. I don't see it on here, but uh, I'll contact uh, them. So there should be a bonus uh, for you taking a rack as well, I believe. Um, anyway, so uh, that's just about it for Italy. Um, I'll tell you. I might as well tell you the victory objective since uh, <laughs> since there's not a lot a lot to tell you about Italy. So one is expand the air empire, score one victory objective for each new land zone Italy possesses at the end of the game that they didn't start with. Uh, so just take two territories and and uh, or two land zones and, and there you go, there's your two points. And then there's the Mediterranean. Now there's a point uh, that is available to the British as well and it's the same point and it's score one victory objective if Italy has twice as many capital ships in the Mediterranean as the Allies, or they possess Gibraltar, Eastern Egypt, and Malta. So uh, twice as many capital ships are talking about uh, battleships and uh, carriers. But if, you, you're, if you've got one battleship in here and, and the Allies don't have any ba uh, um, capital ships, then you get that point because they consider one to be double of, of nothing, okay? <laughs> Um, so, uh, there's four points available to you because the last one is, uh, one I mentioned earlier, you get one point if the nationalists win the Spanish civil war. Um, <clears throat> so as far as specialty units now in the, in the last version of the game, version two, there was these guys, uh, they were, they were called black shirt or yeah, they were called black shirts and what they were, were. Uh, militia type units but they could also move and they could move outside of the home country but they had to be built in the home country so those are gone now um, if you bought the militia chips or, or the black shirt chips like I have and you've got it uh, glued on there don't worry about it you can still use that because they've got a new thing now it's called colonial infantry and it's just like the British colonial infantry what it is is you can build uh, an infantry outside of your home country. So we talked about their home country being a, those four territories. You could build uh, just an infantry unit outside of home country in a place that has a point value. So like these two places have a point value. Tobruk does not have a, a point value. So you wouldn't be able to build it in Tobruk, right? Um, but you would be able to build it in these places. Uh, down here, let's see. Yeah, here is Italian Somaliland. You'd be able to, to build an infantry down here. Uh, what about this place here, Eritrea? Nope, you wouldn't be able to build it in Eritrea. It's not worth anything. So that's how that works. Um, if, if these places were worth two, then you could build two of them there, but I don't see them being worth two anywhere. But also, look, here's uh, the island of Sardinia. That's worth one. Um, what about Sicily? Nope, Sicily's not worth anything, so you couldn't build it there. <clears throat> anyway, so you can build these infantry out there, but if you, if you did have these things like I do, these black shirts already, then, you know, just um, call these your colonial infantry and, and uh, build these down here. <laughs> it's up to you. You don't have to. You can just use 
just a regular infant series sculpt if you want. Uh, so the cost of these is going to be four instead of three and no factory is needed to build them. And uh, um, yeah, same numbers as a regular infantry, just uh, except for the cost being plus one at, at four instead of three. So that is all for Italy. But let's just talk a little bit about them. As I said, they, they do get uh, uh, a pretty good navy there. Like that, that looks pretty good already, but there's also two boats over here, right? And there is, uh, there's a battleship on the Belle Pew. There's a heavy cruiser over here. And there's a, 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 a submarine that goes on the board at the start of the game, right? Uh, you've got three aircraft already. Uh, so, you know, like you've got a really good starting point. Um, what I what I like Italy for is is using them for uh, teaching new players. Y y if you got somebody that hasn't played the game before, maybe they played Axis and Allies. I mean, this is a very different game, right? So you, you let them play Italy rather than just sitting around watching, right? You know, and then they're invested in the game, right? Because uh, they're taking part in it. And uh, Italy doesn't really do much for quite a long time because they need to build up Rome as I said they need to make themselves secure before they declare war on anybody so that new person can be doing these kind of things they can be lend leasing to the the nationalists if you want I mean uh, the Italy players got lot or sorry the Germany player has tons to do you could uh, just let the Italian player uh, roll for the nationalists if they want you know that that give them something to do if they if they would you know that give them some practice at, at, at combat um, but anyway, I mean, you don't have to, like they can just, uh, they can just, um, just do Italy and that will give them some time to watch how the game is played, watch how Germany plays, watch how the Commonwealth plays, you know, the, they'll be able to see some naval combat and see how the common term works and everything. And they'll be absorbing the rules from all around the board, but they won't just be sitting there bored because they'll have their own country that once a turn, they'll have to get in there and you know, <laughs> shine the spotlight on that guy, right? And say, what are you going to do, you know? And, uh, and so, it, you know, like it's it's kind of neat that way that you have a country like that. Um, it's not like uh, just having the FEC or something or ANZAC as a minor power because they're part of a, a, a major power as well. Like they're part of the Commonwealth. Whereas Italy is a standalone country. And, you know, like uh, uh, China is... Uh, uh, those are smaller nations as well, but those aren't played like the rest of them, you know, so it, it's uh, that's a difficult t teaching tool because you're telling them to play a different game than everybody else is playing, you know, they're, they're not there. Whereas these guys, you know, they're still using factories. Uh, they're still using the regular rules and everything. They're not using specialized rules that are made just for China, right? Um, but like I said, as far as strategy goes, try to build up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can, you know, like swoop in and take one of these things, uh, Gibraltar or Suez Canal. Um, try to get uh, some units down to Africa here. You don't want to be kicked off the continent of Africa. I tell you, if you could take the Mediterranean and all of Africa and the Middle East, you would be a beast. You know, that would be the, the most you could possibly hope for, right? Um, you would be a superstar in this game and that can happen like Italy every once in a while that's going to happen with Italy um, they're gonna need some help doing that of course right it, it, the British are gonna be occupied somewhere else in order for that to happen but it can happen is all I'm saying and um, but uh, but at the very least like I said hang on to your capital and try to get the Suez and the uh, Gibraltar and try to get those points at the end of the game, right? Um, that's really what it's all about: is 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 getting the points for at the end of the game. And uh, if you can get two or even three points, that's going to go a long ways towards the Axis winning this game. Like then J Germany and Japan don't have to have phenomenal games. If Italy had a good one, right? Uh, that then uh, you can uh, win. Like it, it's not often you see. You know, like I've seen, I think the most points somebody get is 17 one side. And they, they were just, you know, it, Germany and Japan were just phenomenal that game. But normally, uh, all sides are, are under 10 points or 10 at the most. And so 
a, a couple points from from Italy it, it may, means a huge difference so it's all about making sure you have more capital ships in the Mediterranean but you can't do that if you don't have a navy right you can't just put a capital ship down and expect it to survive um, although you do get to put one down after the British take their last turn so maybe that's a, that's something to think about right if you had it on the bill queue and, and all you had to do is uh, pay for that last stage that might be something to think about but uh, there's lots of things that you can try though too uh, you know like you can get you can uh, build some transports and put some units on it and uh, while you're at peace you can you can go through these uh, canals and um, straits uh, you're allowed to but uh, once you're at war then you can't go through them or at least you could, the British player probably won't let you go through them it's their choice and of course they're not going to let you if you're at war with them right but you can get outside of uh, outside of the Mediterranean and go and find something else to do you know I go and attack the FEC or something. Although the problem with that is, is that, like I said just a minute ago, that's where your points are. Is down here, right? Uh, your your job is to secure your capital and dominate the Mediterranean and North Africa. Uh, so um, if you can do more than that, great. But that's just remember that that's where your points are when you're thinking about doing weird things. Um, one of the things I was watching a, a video by Wintermute this morning. He was showing a, a, a video with he's got the big map one of the things i hadn't noticed is that this convoy line right here is not british see it british line stops right here this convoy line here is actually from the fec so once you are at war like i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't just go to war for that because when you convoy somebody that's declaring war on them it's pretty easy for you to convoy that line there and take money off the fec right um it depends though i mean like in this case right here i mean this guy could uh uh hit you with the maritime air patrol too right you might you might have to be in with the rest of the navy but i'm just saying like if if uh if uh you've taken the british navy out of there if if you've done your job then um start convoying in there put a couple subs in there convoy the british and convoy the fec there's there's something that you can do right there as well right you could be really effective in this game as the Italians, or you could be out of the game real quick if you, uh, if you, if you're reckless. You know, you just uh, don't be reckless and uh, play a steady game, and and uh, you'd probably get some points for your side. Anyway, um, oh, there there should be one other thing. Where is it? Let me look for it here. Uh, strategic naval movement. Uh, that's two units. Now, I don't see that being a, an issue with you. Strategic naval movement is when you go from one friendly port to another. You can go five spaces and it's non-combat. It's only for transports and the things that you transport on transports, the, the units that are on there. Um, because you, you're looking at such a small area here, you're probably not going to need to transport something or move it something five uh, spaces. I guess if you decided to bring a transport down here or something, right? then you could bring it all the way back up to your home country for more if you had the Suez Canal there. You know, that's something. But anyway, it, it's two is your uh, is your strategic naval movement. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. So, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.